Hello students, I am your mathematics faculty and today I welcome you all to the quick solution discussion of AIATS for J Advanced 2020 test number 3 paper 1 code ENF. Okay, so this test was held on 24th of February 2019 and let us begin the solution discussion with question number 41. This is a question based on complex numbers which says that the complex number satisfying the first condition is modulus of Z plus Z bar plus modulus of Z minus Z bar is equal to 2 and the second condition is modulus of z plus iota plus modulus of z minus iota equal to 2 maybe. So it is a single correct type question. So out of the four given options, only one is correct. Okay. So let us start this particular question. For the first part, modulus of z plus z bar plus modulus of z minus z bar equals 2. Put z is equal to x plus iota y simply. Any complex number can be represented as x plus iota y. z bar that is the conjugate will be given as x minus iota y. So clearly z plus z bar will give you 2x and then the modulus. This will give you the modulus of 2 iota y which is equal to 2. Ultimately you are going to get modulus of x plus modulus of y is equal to 1 because I can cancel 2 and I know that modulus of iota is 1. Okay. So mod x plus mod y equals 1. The second condition modulus of z plus iota plus modulus of z minus iota is equal to 2. Now students, this is mod of z minus z1 plus mod of z minus z2 equal to modulus of z1 minus z2. This is the distance of a point z from minus iota. This is the distance of a point z from iota. This is the distance between iota and minus iota. So this particular locus represents the line segment joining iota and minus iota. Simply, if I talk in Cartesian coordinate, it is the line segment joining 0, 0,1 and 0, minus 1. Out of all the points lying on this particular line segment, only two points satisfy the first condition. One is z equal to iota and the other one is z equal to minus iota. Okay. So according to the obtained solution, I can clearly see that option number C is correct. Okay. Let us move on to 42. Question number 42 based on complex numbers again says that if three complex numbers z1, z2 and z3 are such that their modulus are equal to 1 and z1 plus z2 plus z3 is equal to 0. Then the area of triangle whose vertices are z1, z2 and z3 is. Students, whenever the three modulus are equal, we know that these three points are lying on the unit circle. And we very well know that z1 plus z2 plus z3 for a particular case can be taken out to be equal to 1 omega omega square which are the cube roots of unity because sum of cube roots of unity vanishes and that is equal to 0. Okay, so we have z1 as 1, z2 as omega, z3 as omega square. This is just a special case involving cube roots of unity because these z1, z2, z3 satisfy all the conditions which are given in the question. Now we know that z1, z2, z3, 1 omega omega square form an equilateral triangle and the side of that equilateral triangle is root under 3 by 2 whole square plus root 3 by 2 whole square and that will give you 9 by 4 plus 3 by 4 that is root 3 simply. So we have the area of equilateral triangle representing z1, z2, z3 as under root of 3 by 4 a square and which is ultimately going to give you 3 root 3 by 4 square units. Okay, so option number A is correct. Very simple one. Let us move on to 43. 43, it is a question based on probability. It says that if the papers of four students can be checked by any one of the seven teachers, then the probability that all the four papers are checked by exactly two teachers. So students, we have four students. S1, S2, S3, S4, let us say. They gave a paper and the paper can be checked by any one of the seven teachers available in that particular question. Seven teachers. Let us say T1, T2, T3, T4 up to T7. So students, what we can see here, we will have to find out the probability that all the four papers are checked by exactly two teachers. So students, when we talk about the number of elements in the sample space, the paper of student 1 can be checked by any of the seven teachers. Similarly for student 2, similarly for student 3, similarly for student 4. So 7 raised to the 4 are the total possibilities in which the papers can be get checked in this particular question. 
एन ऑफ ई द फेवरेबल इवेंट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट चारों बच्चों के पेपर एक्जेक्टली दो टीचर्स को चेक करने हैं वो दो टीचर कौन से होंगे हमें सिलेक्ट करने पड़ेंगे नंबर ऑफ वेज ऑफ सिलेक्शन सेवन सी टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय अब क्या होता है कि पहले स्टूडेंट का पेपर दो टीचर में से कोई भी चेक कर सकता है दूसरे का भी तीसरे का भी चौथे का भी बट हमें माइनस वो केस करने पड़ेंगे जिसमें चारों स्टूडेंट्स के पेपर एक बार पहले टीचर ने चेक कर दिए एक बार दूसरी ने सो माइनस वन माइनस वन टू केसेस विल बी सब्टेड दिस विल गिव यू सेवन सी टू इज ट्वेंटी वन एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू फोर्टीन सो दिस इज सिक्स इंटू सेवन स्क्वायर सो वॉट इज द आंसर ऑफ प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ इवेंट ई By definition, number of favorable events upon number of total events, we have six into seven square upon seven raised to the power four, which will give you six upon forty nine as the final answer. Okay, we have option number B as correct. Fine. Let us move on to forty four. Question number forty four says that if x i greater than zero for one less than equal to i less than equal to n and x one plus x two plus x three so on till x n is equal to pi. So sigma x i is equal to pi. Then the greatest value of the sum साइन एक्स वन प्लस साइन एक्स टू प्लस साइन एक्स थ्री अप टू साइन एक्स एन इज इक्वल टू स्टूडेंट ईच ऑफ द एक्स आई इज पॉजिटिव एंड सम ऑफ ऑल एक्स आई आर इज इक्वल टू पाई विच मीन दैट ऑल एक्स आई बिलोंग टू जीरो टू पाई विच फर्दर मीन्स दैट ऑल साइन एक्स आई आर पॉजिटिव दैट मीन्स दे बिलोंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन That means they are positive. So we can apply m greater than equal to gm, and the greatest value of sum is obtained when all sine x one, sine x two, sine x three are equal. So by mgm inequality, I can directly say that the maximum sum is obtained when all sine x i are equal, which ultimately means that all x i are equal. So if all x i are equal, each x i is equal to pi by n. So the answer of this question. That is the answer of greatest value of sum is n into sin x i and the value of x i is simply pi by n. So option number C goes correct. Okay, a very simple question based on EMG inequality. You just have to identify that yes, the quantities are always positive. Okay, let us move on to question number forty five. Question number forty five. It says that if sin x plus cos second x plus tan y plus cot y equals four, where x y belong to the first quadrant, that is zero to pi by two. And tan y by two is the root of the equation. Students, if x and y both are belonging to the first quadrant, again mind will divert towards positive numbers and EMGM inequality between positive numbers. Sine x plus one by sine x plus tan y plus one by tan y equal to four. Sine x. Plus one by sine x greater than equal to two, pertaining to the condition that x belongs to the first quadrant, which means that sine x is positive. Tan y plus one by tan y, pertaining to the condition y is lying in the first quadrant, it is greater than equal to two. So greater than equal to two, greater than equal to two. Left hand side is greater than equal to four, which means that if left hand side has to be equal to four, then both of these quantities has to be equal to two. Ultimately, sine x is equal to tan y is equal to one. I need tan y by two to be the root of equation. Start from tan y equal to one, two tan y by two upon one minus tan square y by two equals one, which will give me tan square y by two plus two tan y by two minus one equals zero, which is very similar to t square plus two t minus one equals zero. Option number B is correct. Okay. Let us move on to forty-six. Question number forty-six says that limit n tends to infinity n square upon n minus one whole raised to the power sine of one upon root n is equal to. Students, if this is the value l, limit n tends to infinity n square upon n minus one whole raised to the power sine of one by root n. I can surely say that it is infinity raised to the power zero format. So let us take log on both sides and try to apply l hospital rule. So I'll get limit n tends to infinity. Log of a par b is b log a. So sine one by root n into log of n square upon n minus one, which ultimately means that I have infinity by infinity format now because I can write sine as one upon cosecant. One upon cosecant. One by root n. 
this is the value of log l don't forget this okay so i'm going to make a small substitution i'm going to put h as 1 by root n so as n tends to infinity 1 upon infinity that means h tends to 0 so let us substitute the value and evaluate the new limit in form of h so log of l will be limit h tends to 0 it was log of n square upon n minus 1 n is 1 by h square now so log of 1 upon h power 4 upon 1 upon h square minus 1 whole divided by cosecant h which will give you limit h tends to 0 the upper term will simplify to log of 1 upon h square into 1 minus h square this will be left from here divided by cosecant h so what we'll do now we'll apply l hospital rule over here first of all simplify the terms limit h tends to 0 minus 2 log h plus log of 1 minus h square whole divided by cosecant h so let us apply l hospital rule i'll get limit h tends to 0 over here i'll get 2 upon h plus 1 upon 1 minus h square into minus 2h whole divided by the differentiation of cosecant h is minus cosecant h cot h so it is cosecant h cot h i have cancelled the negative sign so this is limit h tends to 0 2 upon h minus 2h upon 1 minus h square divided by cosecant h cot h so i'll need 2 minus 2h square minus 2h square upon h into 1 minus h square into sin h tan h so limit h tends to 0 so we'll adjust sin h and tan h dividing by h and multiplying by h square so this will become limit h tends to 0 i'll get 2 minus 4h square into h upon 1 minus h square so degree of numerator is more so the value is simply 0 log l is 0 so if log l is 0 l is equal to 1 simply option number c is correct no doubt it is a little bit of lengthy problem but yes we have a definite pattern take log and apply l hospital rule okay for 46 is done let us move on to next section